if you were to live in JB and then you travel to Singapore daily for work, is it really worth it? I've seen some videos about this kind of thing documenting Malaysians or even some Singaporeans trying out the idea. So let's discuss the pros and cons and I'll give you some personal insights of how I think. Now you see the decision to really commute daily from JB Johor Bahru Malaysia to Singapore is fundamentally on the cost because of money reasons. We all know that how much rental is costing us in Singapore. Like the same cost for rental in Singapore could afford you a very large apartment or even a terrace house in terms of rental in Johor Bahru. So you see, a lot of people are really thinking about the money aspect. For context-wise, I do not do any daily commute from Johor Bahru to Singapore, but I do transition from country to country. That's why you can see from this that my background is always changing. It is never static in one nation or one city or even one location. And if you're from Malaysia, like where I am now, you can actually get one free Apple stock when you sign up with Moomoo Malaysia and fulfill the requirements, terms and conditions apply. Even if you're a Malaysian working in Singapore, you can still sign up for Malaysia Moomoo account as long as you have a Malaysian ID. And if you want to have a deeper discussion about this Malaysia and Singapore lifestyle, then I will refer you to join my Telegram group at Honey Money SG with close to 14,000 members and discuss about personal finance there. Now, usually how people decide whether to live in Johor Bahru, J or Singapore is that they do a bottom-up approach. They will compare their cost of living, living within JB and living within Singapore, which one is better for their own situation. And then they see which one better, they will choose the better one. But of course, there are many non-monetary factors like family, like convenience, like health, time and space. All these things that people will consider and I will see that as a bottom-up approach. But this time, I shall consider a top-down approach, which means that I'll look at things in a macro view and then I zoom in on the final details and to help you do your decision on whether you should live in Johor Bahru or Singapore if you are working in Singapore. And I'm going to make some assumptions here because it is going to be a Malaysian who already has a house in JB and he is commuting to Singapore daily by public transport. He is not using the motorcycle because if he use a motorcycle, it will be a whole new different calculation. How much is rental in Singapore though? If we look at just the Property Guru Singapore website, a common room is around $1,100. My search term in Property Guru will be HDB plus entire room. So I'm not talking about room sharing. So if you want to do room sharing, your cost could be divided by half. And in one month, I'm just going to assume 22 work days plus 8 weekend days. And during these 8 weekend days, the Malaysian is going to travel back to his or her hometown in JB. So he's not staying inside the Singapore rental property. So if you just average out the daily rental, it will be $1,100 divided by 22 work days, which is $50 of rental per day. So you see, if you spread out the cost by day, it is only $50 daily. And you see, it is not as daunting as that $1,100 per month, right? And if you want to think of better ways to earn $50 a day passively, then I can refer you to my sponsor, Momo. I know that investments may sound really complicated and it is quite scary to start off with really large amounts. So if you want to start with smaller amounts, then you can consider to use Momo Regular Savings Plan or RSP to dollar cost average into your favorite US stocks or ETF. To set up RSP, select your stock or ETF on Momo app, click the three dots on the right and then RSP. Start with minimum 10 US dollars and select contribution frequency from weekly, every two weeks, monthly or daily. Momo also has a new RSP calculator where if you put in your desired stock or ETF and put in the dates, they can show you the historical results based on the past trend. And then if you want, you can even create an RSP from there. For new to Moomoo users, you can get up to 447 Singapore dollars on Moomoo Cash Plus based on the 6.8% per annum guaranteed return applied on the first 80,000 Singapore dollars of your holding. Please note that Moomoo Cash Plus is an investment product. It is not comparable and is different from savings deposits. Principal is not guaranteed and up to 30 days, 6.8% per annum is guaranteed only during the promotional period. Also, you can get up to four stock bundles of the top five traded US stocks worth $70 each and one Apple stock worth of 243 Singapore dollars. And if you sign up with my exclusive link, you can get a bonus 20 Singapore dollars cash coupon. Total rewards value of 990 Singapore dollars. Holding period and buy trade applies. Investment in capital market products involves risk and the risk of losing principal. For more details, please refer to the promotional page in the description below. So don't miss this deal and use my referral link down below or scan the QR code right here to get your Moomoo SG Universal account today. 
but that is only on the accommodation cost. We haven't even factored in the price difference or cost difference if you were to live in Singapore. Because if you were to live in JB, you could buy your groceries and buy your dinner there at JB cost. But since you're living in Singapore, at least the dinner has to be in Singapore cost. How much is a meal in JB though for dinner? I would say roughly around 10 Malaysian ringgit based on the current inflation. It is quite tough to find 8 ringgit and below meals in Johor Bahru anymore, even in the neighborhood Kopitiam. Then for dinner cost in Singapore, I'm going to price it at $6. So sometimes you may eat at Kopitiam, sometimes you may eat in food court, sometimes you may eat at Hawker Center. So let's average it out to $6 per day. So 10 Malaysian ringgit, if you convert back to Singapore dollars, it is around 3 Singapore dollars, which means a cost differential of 6 minus 3, which is 3 Singapore dollars per day additional for your dinner cost. No, I never include breakfast or lunch because I'm really assuming that lunch has to be taken in Singapore during your work hours. Plus, some people also skip breakfast or anyhow eat for breakfast, so I won't include that cost. And that is cost of dining for you. But how about another additional cost, which is transportation? Because if you were to just live in Singapore, your transportation costs are going to be much lower compared to you commute daily because the cross-border custom buses also do add up quite a bit. And how much are we talking about? If we look at the Causeway Link cross-border bus website, the ticket fares are as follows. From JB to Singapore, it is $2.60 in Malaysia Ringgit. And you convert back to Singapore, that is around $0.70. Cents. Then from Singapore to JB bus, assuming you are taking from Kranji MRT, that is $2.60 Singapore dollars. Now, I already excluded further transportation costs from the JB Central, which is at JB Customs, to your personal home at JB. Because I don't know how much that will cost, but it's roughly around 2 ringgit for a public bus ride unless you have people fetching you from the customs. So if you add up the additional transportation costs, it is around $3 additional and that will actually offset your dinner cost, right? Because the cost differential for dinner is $3 and the cost differential for transport is additional $3 if you were to add in daily commute. Therefore, if you net all these costs together, your total additional cost is actually only $50 for the accommodation to a whole entire room to yourself. Now, let's factor in the time spent. I'm going to assume that it adds additional 2 hours per way to commute, which means a total of 4 hours because not only you have to brief the gems in the custom, you also have to take into account traveling time, commuting time, and sometimes it just have to be that one bugger creating a problem in the custom and then it will delay your whole work schedule, which means to and fro is an additional 4 hours of commute per day. That is very taxing on your body as well as the convenience lacking. So if you were to just take $50, which is your additional cost, divide by the 4 hours of additional time that you have to spend, it is only $12.50 per hour. Then you have the thing for yourself. It's $12.50 per hour more than your daily rate or even your overtime pay rate. And you know that most overtime pay is 1.5x the hourly rate, right? So if you take 12.5 divided by 1.5, it is only about $8 plus hourly rate. So you think about it, lah. whether you want to just work OT to earn the additional pay or you just want to commute a longer hours and take a toll on your body and health. Now, the benefits of living in Singapore is that you have less commute time, you have more time to yourself, and most of your time is not spent on traveling. And in the long term, a long commute definitely destroys your health because of the stress levels as well as being in a high tension state when you have to rush for buses as well as catch the next transport to really be on time for work or even leave early enough so that the customer is not so jam-packed yet. Now, even so, doing 2 hours of overtime pay at $12.50 per hour, you net $25 can really cover half your cost of the daily accommodation in Singapore. And you still have more free time than the daily commuter between the two countries where they need to rush back and forth. So you can do more things for yourself, more hobbies, and you may even want to explore a side hustle. But I know what some of you are going to say already because the benefits of living in JB is definitely you can stay in your own home, you don't need to listen to landlord, you have so much more space, and you can look at your family. If you want to compare a single HDB common room to like the semi-D or terrace houses in JB, it's really no fire. The space cannot be compared on. As well as more freedom to live without the landlord because I know that Singaporean landlords can get quite picky. Like, they, they also limit what time you can on the aircon, how many times you can wash your laundry and whether you can cook or not and sometimes even limit your toilet time. But I guess the most important factor for people commuting daily between JB and Singapore is that they get to see their family, right? They have roots down there in JB. So if their child is in the growing up years from a baby, they do not want to miss the child's growth. Like you stay in Singapore, how can you see your child every day through video call? I think 
that is something that you have to consider if you're raising a family. So to put it very simply, if you're single, it's more preferred that you stay in Singapore because you don't have family to go back home to. You don't need to see your kid, right? And you can save all the extra hours by working overtime or you can work on your side hustle to bring in the additional pay to afford that $50 additional accommodation and you still have a healthy body. Then if you're married with a kid especially and it's based in Johor Bahru, then maybe daily commute is more suitable for you. But you have to take additional risks like your risk to your health, from daily commute as well as more prone to traffic accidents because you are always on the road. So really, there's no right or wrong. See what you prefer. If you like the space, you like the freedom, go and stay in JB. But if you want to have more time for yourself, definitely staying in Singapore is not a bad idea after all and it's not as expensive as you think. So that's my very simplistic analysis of whether you should stay in Singapore or stay in JB if you are working in Singapore as a Malaysian. But if you really want to know of my situation, what have I really changed after living in Malaysia for a few months, then I can refer you to watch my popular video on comparing lifestyle between Singapore and Malaysia right here.